Hey guys, welcome back to another video of Generation Old School. If it's your first time passing by the channel, my name is William. On this video, I'm gonna show you my 1950 Chevy two-door hardtop that I have been selling for quite some time. And I'm gonna give you guys an update and show you guys the car in more depth, more details so that I can answer any questions that you guys might have. So as you guys can see, I'm waxing the car. This is a 1950 Chevy. It's got original paint and I am the second owner. It has a power glide transmission. I don't drive the car anymore. And the reason why I'm selling it is because next to it is my 1954 Oldsmobile. This is a two door hardtop. As you guys can see, it's got some patina. The paint is original. What I'm doing today is waxing it. I like to wax these cars every so often. So it's got some wax that I'm ready to take off. I already did the trunk and the other quarter panel and I'm doing the driver's side. For those of you guys that want to do this yourself, this is the wax that I use. It's very good. I have been using it for quite some time and it does an amazing job. The car has a 235 engine and uh, like I said, a power glide transmission, original paint. It's got all the accessories that you could purchase back in the 1950s, like the corner guard, the front bumper guard, the flying bird wood ornament. It's got a 235 engine. Many people tell me that this is not a 235, that in 1950 they didn't have 235. And I just want to let you guys to do your research before you start commenting things that you don't know. Because in 1950, every single car that had a power glide transmission was equipped with a 235 engine that came on the 1949, 1950s Chevy trucks. The car is still a six volt. The generator works. Um, the carburetor is a little bigger because this carburetor is from a 1950 she 1957 Chevy 235. And if you notice, it's got the automatic choke, so you don't have to be pulling the choke on the dash. So this car has no manual choke, it has an electronic choke. The carburetor is bigger than the normal carburetor that will come in these 235 engines, and it's better. That's why I put it, the car drives and runs like a brand new car. In a couple of minutes, we're gonna be starting the car so that you guys can see. The radiator is original too. I removed the radiator and flushed it. So it's it's good. It's got no dirt or anything. Um, I didn't want to paint it because I like the original look. It's got horns on both sides. Again, six volts, everything works. The wires are in very, very good conditions even though they are original, as you guys can see there. Regulator box. The steering column was rebuilt and it's got new bushings. And it also has the new internals that run inside the uh, steering column. With that being said, the car has no play whatsoever on the steering wheel when you're driving. I'm gonna go ahead and start the car so that you guys can see how good it sounds. I'm gonna go ahead and connect the battery. I like to disconnect the battery. I haven't started the car. As you guys can see, it's cold. I don't wanna take too long because I need to take away, I need to remove the wax. Otherwise, it's gonna be too hard for me to remove. All the glass in the car is in great shape, as you guys can see. I installed these beep mirrors on both sides of the car because it didn't come with side mirrors. Door panels are good. This car has 14,000 miles. Many of you guys probably don't believe me, but as you guys can see here, it was serviced at 9,972 miles. This one doesn't have the date, but if you come over here, it's got a date and it says 925 65 
and the car had 70,000 miles. I mean, not 70,000, sorry, 7,000 miles. And then a couple miles down the road, they serviced it at 9,000 miles. On the dash, it is showing 14,825 miles. Everything on the dash work. All the lights work. As you guys can see, the lights in the back are functioning. All the chrome on the headliner, including the headliner and visors are in excellent condition. You got a mirror there. It says Buick. I put that there myself from a 1948 Buick that I had. The other one doesn't have a mirror. This cord doesn't have a radio. And in a couple of minutes, I'm gonna be telling you why it doesn't have a radio. So like I mentioned, this car has no choke. The choke is disconnected because we replaced the carburetor and we put a modern carburetor. So instead of having a manual choke, it has a um, electronic choke. So let's give it two pumps. It's on parking. Even the wipers work, something that is very unusual in these cars. And the wipers are not electronic, they are vacuum. So those have not been replaced. All the headlights work. Every single gauge work. As you guys can see when I turn on the lights, the battery discharges a little bit, which is normal. It's a six volt car. I'm gonna turn it off and it goes back up. The temperature works, gasoline works, battery you guys saw that it works oil pressure works and the speedometer is also accurate it works the dash is in excellent conditions as well as the steering wheel it has no cracks horn works interior is good seats in the back are good the top deck over there is good front seat is also good including the back of the seat. You guys can see that it's good. All the windows roll up and down as it should. Same thing with the back one. Look how beautiful this car looks with the windows down. It's got the ring guard protection. All the chrome in the car is in excellent shape, guys. It's a deluxe. It's got the wraparound corners on both bumpers, front and back, which nowadays, this is a $2,000 add-on. The tires are Firestone 67015, and it's got the entire hubcaps. You can remove this and just leave the center cap but i like it like that this was an accessory from the 1950s it's got no misfires it's got an oil filter which was also an accessory back then it runs good No leaks in the carburetor. No misfire coming from the exhaust. It's got dual exhaust. It's got zero rust. The car was lowered two inches in the back to give it that tail dragger look from California. And it's got the three windows in the back. The only car that has three windows in the back and a full-size rear window is a 1950 Chevy hardtop, which was the first year of their hardtop. They didn't have a hardtop in 1949. They didn't have a power glide in 1949. They didn't have a 235 engine in 1949. They didn't have the bumper guards in 1949. All of these were accessories from the 1950s and this was the first year of that came out on this car. 
I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the car. The transmission shift without a problem. That's neutral, that's drive. E-brake works. Drive, you got low and you got reverse and everything works. A lot of people are looking for this cars, especially with no poles and 235 engine and um, power glide transmission. So I'm very impressed that I haven't sold this car yet, to be honest with you guys. It's got four wide wall tires all around in very, very good conditions. It's got zero rust. It's got a new fuel tank. It has low end blocks, like I mentioned to you guys earlier. Zero rust. No patches, no bundle. This car is solid. Um, I'm gonna show you guys the trunk real quick. Okay, so it's got some patina here from, you know, old, but it's got no rust, no rust whatsoever. Same thing with the trunk. All right. So over here, you got the original title. You got some uh, documents from 1950 that came with the car. You got um, accessories. That's a booklet that has all the accessories that were available for this car in 1950. Let me go ahead and show, and show you guys that booklet. Give me a second. It's got the spur tire, same color as the car. It looks like it has never been used. And this is a fan that I was gonna put to in the front of the radiator, but you know, it was not really needed. The car doesn't overheat, so I never put it. Let me go ahead and show you this. Um, here it tells you how to change the oil and how to check the oil. Look at this, this is a very unique accessory book. It's got the hood ornament, which was, which was um, an accessory back then. Not every deluxe came with that. And if you want it today, you have to purchase it. Um, backup lights were also an accessory and this one has it. The front fog light is an accessory. This one doesn't have it. This is for the the light in the in the hood and in the luggage compartment or the trunk which this one doesn't have it you got the spotlight this one doesn't have it and the radio back then was um an option the reason why this car doesn't have a radio is because the original owner of the car was the lady who was deaf the lady didn't hear so the car has no radio. The radio will go there, right next to the, the choke and the wiper bottoms. So since the lady was deaf, this car didn't come with a radio. And also it came with a very, very, very expensive option, which was the power glide transmission. The antenna was also um, an option. And since this car doesn't have a radio, it also doesn't have an antenna. The antenna will go here. So as you guys can see, it doesn't have the hole for the antenna. That was an add-on, and only people who order a radio on these cars will get an antenna, which is good that it doesn't have an antenna because when you put a cover on the car, you don't have to open a hole on the cover to slide the antenna through. Let's go back to the book to see what else we can find. Um. The cigarette lighter was an option. The ash, the ashtray was an option. The radio was an option. This one has it, of course, and it works. This, the sun visor was an option. The shaver, look, that must have been a very expensive option back then that you could buy for the car. Tissue dispenser, utility pocket. The visor was an option. Now. This car doesn't come with an option with the visor 
because that was not an option for this car because of how the roof sits on top of the windshield. The hardtop and the convertible, the roof sits on top of the windshield. That's why for these cars, there is no windshield. There is no uh, visor, even though you can buy one and adapt it. But in 1950, if you wanted a hardtop, the visor was not an option. This is all a different type of um, fabrics that you could get on your seat. Here, these are the mirrors that the car has right now. The ones that hang on the side. This is something, this is a receipt from Minnesota. Department of Public Safety driving license receipt dated um, 1983, November 8, 1983 in Minnesota. This car is original from Minnesota. <coughs> the dealer where the car was always serviced at, it's also in Minnesota, as you guys can see here. Winona, Minnesota. And if you guys put that address, it's gonna take you to a dealership. It's still a Chevy dealer in Minnesota. And the address of the person who I bought this car from is 30 minutes away from that dealer, from that address that I just showed you. I'm the second owner of this car. Um, Jack, which is over here, is never being used. It's still strapped down to the car and it still has the decals. Um, it didn't have a, it didn't come with a toolbox license plate frame the license plate frame it had it but i'm using it in the oldsmobile right there so the night it's a license plate from the 1950s the original owner of this car like i said was a lady and her husband used to work for uh, general motors he was one of the executive of general motors this is what i was telling you guys about the wheel disc this is what I have in all of the four tires of the car, which is the full size wheel covers. Um, and I don't know what else is inside this booklet. I really don't, oh, the wrap around corners. All of those were very expensive accessories back then and they cost around $2,000 today. Same thing as the rear fender panels, which the car has it. Um, turn signals was an accessory back then, and this car has it. The windshield washer it was an accessory back then. This car doesn't have it. Um, heater, it has it. Um, door armrest, it has it as well. And the deluxe steering wheel. It doesn't have it. Very expensive accessory. You could buy one. You can buy a reproduction nowadays and you'll be looking to pay around $300 for a reproduction deluxe steering wheel. This car is in excellent conditions and I'm asking $27,000 for the car. I hope one of you guys buy this car. Don't think about it anymore. It's an excellent car. You're not gonna have any issues with the car. The car, since it has a power glide transmission, you're able to cruise at 60, 65 miles an hour without any problems. It's got zero rust. You got all the cables in excellent conditions. This car, like I mentioned, has 14,000 miles. And even you got some tags on the wires from the 1950s that obviously I'm not gonna be removing. make sure that I have the keys yes give me a call man let's talk about the car let's make a deal I hate to sell the car unfortunately I need to get rid of the car because I already bought an Oldsmobile I'm not rich and I don't want to have two cars it's too much maintenance too much insurance and I'd rather have one of you guys enjoy the car since I'm not driving it anymore I'm using the Oldsmobile 
Thank you guys so much. If there's any other question that I can answer, let me know in the comments down below and I'll be more than happy to get to you. You can also follow me on Instagram and Facebook at Generation Old School. Thank you and God bless you all.